working with Air Cruise Aviation as an aviation manager. So today I will be talking about the parts of an aircraft. So let us get started with the today's presentation that is parts of an aircraft. So in this picture you can see an aircraft and its various parts are being represented. So this is the basic description of an aircraft and each and every aircraft have this all these parts. So let us have a further look. This is all about my bio. If you wish, you can follow me on social media. So let's get started. So what are the different parts of an aircraft? So here you can see a picture of an aircraft. So we will be starting from the nose. The front part is the nose. And just beh behind that, there is the cockpit area which is also known as flight deck where the pilot controls the aircraft and followed by this there on the wings we have a various section that is ailerons flaps so basically ailerons are the control surfaces of an aircraft which enables an aircraft to take turn to the left or the right so that is for what ailerons are used for next to that we have flaps so flaps have basically two functions. It is firstly used to generate more lift at the time of the takeoff, as well as it is used to de decrease the lift when an aircraft has to land. Next to that, here we have cabin in the fuselage of the aircraft. So the cabin is a portion in an aircraft where the person can have a seat arrangement within the aircraft. So if we talk about Last section here we have fin, rudder, tail, elevator. So all of these have the different functions. If I talk about the rudder, it is also the control surface of an aircraft, which is used to take, uh, which is used to take left and right uh, uh, to deviate left and right. The tail section is the la uh, tail section of the aircraft. The elevator. Elevator is used to pitch up or pitch down the aircraft. Its motion is in the upward or the downward portion. Next to have, we have is a wing area that, have, uh, that, is, that mainly, mainly has ailerons and flaps on it. So this is about the description of a small aircraft. So let us have a look on how a small aircraft parts are all about. So starting with this uh, nose portion, we, we have a propeller. So propeller and uh, propeller engine, then we have a right wing and the right aileron, aileron cables, right flap. So these are all are the parts on the aircraft wing. The ailerons, as I have told you earlier, that these are the control surfaces which enables to take the turn that is right or left turn. Then followed by this, we have cabin where we have seating arrangement of the passengers and cabin which is situated within the fuselage of the aircraft. Followed by that, we have the horizontal stabilizer that is in the tail section of the aircraft. And horizontal stabilizer are controlled with the elevators also. And followed by that, we have the vertical stabilizers in which we have the rudder. Then further, we have trim tab. So this trim tab has basically the use with uh, lift of an aircraft. So in, in case we need to generate a high amount of lift, trim tab enables to do that. Then we have the left section of the aircraft wing where we have left flap, left aileron, and if you see about, if you see the navigation light, it is at the wingtip of an aircraft. So you basically see some lights in the outer portion of the aircraft. So if you see any light at the wingtip of an aircraft, so that is basically for the navigation light. And just below that here we have the landing gears which can be retracted or can be fixed type. The fixed type landing, landing gears are fixed to their positions. And if I talk about the re retracting air landing gears, so that can be ret uh, retracting, landing gear can be retracted back into this position. 
So these are the parts of the aircraft. Here we can have a look at how a small aircraft can be all about. So it is a small aircraft carrying a seat of four passengers only, two for pilots and two behind that. So the small aircraft are basically the propeller driven engine. And here we can see the uh, landing gear position, it, how it is retracting backwards. And in the next picture, you can see the fixed type of landing gears. So this was all about the small aircraft. So this is the front view, how an aircraft looks from the front. And uh, in addition to that, this aircraft is In addition to that, this aircraft is biplane. So you might have heard about the monoplane, biplane, triplane. So here you can see we have two wing sections. One at the top of the fuselage and next at the bottom of the fuselage. So these two wing sections, if an aircraft have two wing section that it is known as biplane. If an aircraft has a single wing section, then it is known as monoplane. So now we will look, have a look on a larger aircraft. So from this picture, you might have an idea of all of the civil aircraft that an airlines use. So these, are, these large aircraft are generally used in the civil airlines. So let's have a look to the various parts of this aircraft. Starting from the nose, at the top, we have the weather radar scanner. So this scanner basically helps to acknowledge about the weather information. Then next to that, we have the crew flight deck and control cabin. So this is the cockpit area where, where the pilots are there who controls the aircraft through the cockpit. So just next to that, we have the business class cabin. And next to that, we have turbofan engines. So here in this picture, you can see there are total four engines and these engines are the turbofan engines, which are situated on the wing part of the aircraft. So next to the turbofan engines, we have main fuel tanks. So this is the area where the fuels are stored. The aircraft fuel is stored into the wings of an aircraft from where we can have a easy connect to the engines. So after the main fuel tanks on the wing portion, we have also different different portion on the wings that is spoilers, which are also known as speed brakes. So spoilers are used as speed brakes in an aircraft. Then next to that, we have main flap. So the purpose of the main flap, as I have told you earlier, the main flap has two functions. The first to generate maximum amount of lift when an aircraft has to take off. Second, to decrease the lift when the aircraft is to land. So this was all about this wing section, right wing section of an aircraft. So next to that, we have the economy class of cabin. So the cabin which is situated in the fuselage of the aircraft, here we have the economy class for the, seat, uh, for the passenger where the seats are arranged. So next you see is galley, galley which is also situated in the aircraft fuselage. So the galley is the portion where the air hostesses or the flight crew has all its of the uh, aircraft needed utilization. So this is the galley. So next we move to the tail section of the aircraft. At the first we have the rudder segments, rudder that is the control surface. And also we have some fuel stored at the tail section of the aircraft as for an aircraft which has to cover a long distance needs to have as much as fuel into its area. So the sum of the fuel is also stored in the fuel tanks so that an aircraft can have a long range. So next to that we have the elevators which are situated on the horizontal stabilizer. Next to that, we have the bulk cargo hold. So the bulk cargo hold is basically the, uh, uh, the basically the cargo with uh, cargo like all the passengers which are traveling into aircraft, the bags are 
are placed in the bulk bulk cargo hold so next moving to the left wing of an aircraft here we have spoilers that are speed brakes next to that we have high speed inner ailerons ailerons which are the control surface of an aircraft so here you can see on each wing we have two spoiler situation situated and next to that we have at the top uh, uh, the leading edge flap so the flap are, flaps are situated on the two position of an aircraft at the leading edge as well as on the trailing edge so both of these flaps have different functions while an aircraft is in flight so next we have is aluminium leading edge so the poor, uh, so the uh, material of this wing leading edges of aluminium next to that we have the low speed outer aileron next to that we have the engines engine oil tank basically so here where engine oil tank is situated and next to that we have turbofan engines on the two on the right wing and two on the left wing as well as we have a feet hold where all the bags as well as extra luggage is carried and just the next we have the main retracting landing gears so an aircraft landing so these kind of aircrafts has retracting landing gears which are retracted back into the fuselage body after the takeoff and while landing this landing gear come out of the fuselage and get into their position so next to that we have the passenger entry door and stairs from these there are two entrance into the aircraft you can see the first one is you can see the two entrances that is for the passenger entry and uh, uh, passenger entry door and stairs so next to that we have the first class cabin so just behind the cockpit we have the first class cabin followed by which we have the business class cabin and at last we have the forward retracting wheels which are situated just below the nose so this was a description about the parts of a large aircraft or a parts of passenger jet airplane so now i will be telling you uh, how these generally look like so you can see how wide and big these uh, passenger aircraft are the fuselage are very much big and they have heavy engines like turbofan turbojet they have heavy engines some of them are situated just below the wing and some of them are situated at the at the tail section at the fuselage part so this is the front as well as the side view of a passenger aircraft so you can just simply see how wide how long the fuselage of such aircrafts are So next we will be talking about the seat arrangement in an aircraft so here we have two pictures the first one is for three class configuration and the second one is for two class configuration so seat arrangement may vary according to the different aircrafts and these arrangements are demanded as per the requirements of the airlines each and every airlines have their own demand of the seat arrangement so the first we will have a look on the three class configuration so just after the nose we have the first class where you can see here the letter are written that are l g s v so l basically represent lavatory g is galley s is storage closet and v is for video monitor so here we have the seat arrangement which is wide open so in the in the first class there are total of 12 seats only and if i similarly talk about the two class configuration here we have first or business class where we have 24 seats so just next to first class and the business class in the three class configuration we have the business class in which we have 25 seats and just after the business class we have the economy class so which is the very basic class 
in which the sender usually prefer to travel as this the as the tickets of the economy class are less cheaper as compared to other class so in the economy class we can see we have 72 rooms 72 seats so the economy class is basically a bit of congested we can say as compared to the first class and business class because in first class and business class we have a wide space for and we have a good leg room but if i talk about the economy class uh, uh, these seats have less space as compared to other two classes and now if i talk about the two class configuration here we have the first first class or business class followed by some economy class so in economy class here we have 158 seats so you can see how congested it looks in economy class so that is why the tickets of such classes is cheaper as compared to the first class so this is how the seat arrangement is done into an aircraft fuselage body and if we have to compare the seat arrangement into the short aircraft and long aircraft so this is how it looks in short the aircraft we have a small fuselage body so here we have a less number of seats and if i talk about the long flight so a long or large aircraft has a large fuselage body so which will be having a more number of seats so this is the economy class of an aircraft so you can see each row is having three seats and how long it is going so it is a definitely a passenger aircraft so next we have a seat arrangement in business class so you can see how comfortable these seats are you have more space for your legs and as well as how it is uh, how the where as there are various features and and there we can see there we have arrangement for the entertainment purpose also the next we have is first class seats so those first class seats are more lavish you can have your own personal space and personal time so you can just extend your seat and you, you can just lie on in a seat so these are the more comfortable as compared to the business as well as economy class so that is why in an aircraft the first class ticket is a bit costly as you can just simply see in this picture how comfortably you can travel into an aircraft so now we will talking about the internal part of an aircraft so other than outer parts we also have some internal parts and most of them i have already explained so i will begin with the nose part so here we have first the cockpit where it is the seating arrangement of the pilot from where the pilot controls the aircraft so the next to have we have the fuselage the main body of an aircraft through which its wings and tail portion is connected on the wing we have the engine and in this aircraft we can see there are two engine one on the left wing one on the right wing and uh, on the fuselage you can see a door which is just above the wing so this is the emergency door if any emergency occurs so this door can be used as the emergency door so an aircraft wing consists of different parts so the ailerons which are the control surfaces the wing flaps which are used for, for the lifting devices so next to that we have the overhead storage so you might see from so some storage area just above the seat arrangement so these storage area are there for uh, storing some of the extra luggage you carry along with you so the next we have is galley and followed by that we have the toilet area so the toilet area is actually at the tail section of an aircraft so next to that we have the horizontal stabilizer followed by an elevator then next we have the vertical stabilizer where rudder is situated both on the left and right side then next to that we have the rear door that is the door at the back of an aircraft 
and then we have the baggage compartment where the luggage of an luggage of passengers are stored so next to that we have the wing section here we have wing flaps as well as the ailerons and onto the wing we have an engine connected to it and just below the aircraft we have the landing gear portions so one of the landing gears situated just below the nose of an aircraft and next is just below to the uh, wing area that is connected to the fuselage part of an aircraft so this was all about the internal parts of the aircraft if we have to look on the cockpit so this is all about a cockpit how a cockpit looks like so cockpit mainly have a seating arrangement of for two or more than two seats that depends upon the aircraft needs that how many pilots are required to operate that aircraft so here you can see various electronic machines in the aircraft so here uh, here the pilots have the head up displays from where they can see the view outside the aircraft followed by various electronic machines like you can say uh, multi function displays where you can see the various task which are performed by the aircraft that is it it shows the weather conditions it shows the navigation conditions for the different aircraft instruments we have the displays uh, which shows the aircraft altimeter that is what is the height of an aircraft with respect to ground level as well as with respect to the sea level what is the banking angle and various scientific instruments are operated into these aircraft so so far we have talked about the internal portion of an aircraft but there is also necessity how an external features of an aircraft should be there as aircraft has to fly high in, at the high altitude so there are various external features required for an aircraft so these features are basically about the aircraft of for airbus that is a380 so what is the basic requirement for the external features so when an aircraft strikes with the wind so various phenomena happen over there so to just reduce the chances for the uh, emergency or other strikes we have the external features so we will start with the nose area so here we have cockpit avionics ventilation so here all the electronic instruments are are situated so some of these instruments are also behind out, are also outside of the aircraft as you can see so these uh, these instruments are generally used for various purposes like you can say the weather radar or if you have if there is if the weather is is some of the heavy like you can have a view of outside the head of this place so here we have sensors which give the clear image of the outside atmosphere so other other than that we have the performance prediction we have fuselage design so each aircraft has its own fuselage design which may vary upon its length or its width how wide an aircraft fuselage can be so these dimension basically varies from one aircraft to another aircraft so next we have the cabin ventilation so it is really required for the ventilation as an aircraft has to carry hundreds of passengers so ventilation is required so we have cabin ventilation apart from that we have cabin nose as you may have already familiar like how noisy is an aircraft while it land and as well as take off so these parameters are to be make in note the next to that we have is low speed wing design so low speed wing design generally means that how an aircraft while an aircraft in a flight so the weather conditions may vary so the the density of an air doesn't remain same as it changes with respect to the altitude so an aircraft wing is designed into a such parameter that it is a low speed wing design this next to that we have flow control devices 
that is VG or stray X. So these are generally the flow control here. Flow control we mean by the uh, by the air or wind. So the next we have is ice prediction. So the hair devices are situated, which tells about the prediction of the ice. Next we have is high speed wing design. So as you can see, uh, the wing area near the fuselage it is low speed wing design and the and we, if we go apart from that, we have the high speed wing design. The next to that we have spoiler control services, which are basically the brakes of an aircraft. Then next we have the tail design. So in the tail design, we, we, here we have some of the fuel, uh, fuel storage. So there is a fuel system design. So at the rear, you can see at the just rear of the tail, you can see the APU inlet outlet design. So APU is basically the auxiliary power unit. So when an aircraft is grounded, so it sometimes needs an external source to get started. So then aircraft needs an external source to get started. So the APU that is auxiliary power unit, it is required. So it is situated at the rear of the tail. So next we have is external noise sources. Then we have the handling quality data. So next to that we have the belly fairing design, which means the outer surface of an aircraft is well polished. So as there can be less skin friction of an aircraft with respect to the wind or air. So next we have the ground effect, like when it is basically required by the, by the takeoff as well as the landing of an aircraft. The next to have, we have the inlet as well as the outlet designs. Then followed by that, we have the nozzle designs as you can see just on the wing part, we have the nozzle designs. So next to that, we have the engine core compartment. So engines are basically situated on the wing part of an aircraft, or as well as they are situated at the rear part of an fuselage section of an aircraft. So next to that, we have the thrust reverser design. So the thrust reversers are basically used to reduce the amount of the thrust. So next to that, we have wingtip designs. So wingtips uh, wing, wing of an, each and every aircraft may vary as according to their designs. So the next we have that inlet design. And then we have missile design. It is basically the outer covering of an aircraft engine. So this is all about the external features of an aircraft, which are to be considered while making an aircraft. So this is my bio. If you wish, you can join me on the social media. So this was all about the today's presentation. I hope you have got enough of knowledge about the parts of an aircraft. Thank you for listening to me.